Hey plant friends, I wanted to hop on here because I have a very sad plant. <laughs> a very sad plant. I'm not really sure why. I, I actually think I do know why. So I got this plant. It has been absolutely thriving. It's been in our bathroom that has a window. But as the season changed, I think the window is very drafty and I think the plant got really shocked. What is happening is the leaves are, all of the leaves are curled as you can see and um, many of them are shriveling up and dying. So I'm a little worried that this plant is a goner. I have checked the roots. The roots are still beautiful, white, you know, fleshy roots. Um, I'm a little bit worried that it's not gonna come back but I am gonna take some suggestions that I've gotten from plant friends before and help this plant out a little bit and like say a little prayer so i wanted to show you what i'm gonna do and grow youtube show so the first thing i'm gonna do is evaluate what leaves are absolute goners and just cut them off because um as long as they're brown they're really no longer serving the plant the plants either like kind of reabsorbed um the good stuff and i'm just gonna trim them up so i can also track to see if more leaves turn brown I'm then going to repot this plant because I've noticed that there are a couple of fungi popping up. There's now been three fungi that pop up. That to me is an indication that I've probably overwatered the plant once or there's something funky in the soil. So I'm gonna repot it and then give it a good water and then I'm gonna use the Mark Hatchadorian of New York Botanical Garden um, houseplant hospital technique. So I'm gonna take a Ziploc bag and I'm going to put the leaves inside it and then I'm gonna Ziploc the pot within the Ziploc bag and create almost a little terrarium for the plant to increase the moisture and apparently this will help the plant kind of bounce back. As you can see I placed some stakes because it's kind of a trailing Maranta um, so I'm going to try and prop the leaves up so the bag doesn't actually crush them and we'll say a prayer and we'll see what happens. Okay, plant friends, it's been two months since that initial houseplant hospital resuscitation situation and holy moly we freaking did it. I kind of can't believe it because it definitely got worse before it got better, and I'm about to tell you about what happened. Um, but look at her. <laughs> She's doing great. Um, so, okay. Oh, I'm just realizing the underside of her leaves matches my shirt. That's really cute. Okay, so it's been about two months since the, um, the resuscitation. We've moved. So here's what's happened. I bagged her up. We then moved on December 30th in the middle of the winter. Um, and then all of my plants, thanks friends, have been going through a bit of a transition adjusting to our new home in the middle of winter. Um, it's kind of, it's about the same humidity level here, but it's just different and I think they all kind of got shocked um, with the cold and also this home is surprisingly low light. Um, at least in the middle of winter. I'm kind of going to wait to see till spring because we do have these skylights. But anyway, that's for another video. So um, the plants aren't like living their best life, but also it's the middle of winter. That's to be expected. But we survived. So here's what happened. I bagged her and as you saw, I had cut holes in the bag. Then I noticed that throughout the following weeks, and I wish I recorded this on my phone, but I didn't because I gotta be real with you, plan friends, I was in the midst of a move and I don't know, I, I didn't, I didn't. I didn't make a lot of content in, the, in those months, I mean in those weeks. So anyway, in the bag, I think I cut too many vents. And I noticed this because there was never any condensation around the bag and the plant wasn't doing any better and it didn't seem moist inside the bag. And so I was like, shoot, I cut too many holes and I ruined the point of this moisture humidity bag. So then I had the genius idea to take a fresh bag with no holes and put it in here. Then it got weird. So I don't know if this was the move, I don't know what happened, but I put a new bag on top of her and all of a sudden one day I went to go check on her and the entire plant was covered in mold. You can see on the photo that we're gonna throw up. I only struck one, I only took one photo, I'm so embarrassed, but I guess you still need some sort of ventilation and in this plant science class I'm learning, uh, I'm taking right now, you have to do something called burp your plants. So if you put them in a humidity cloche, a humidity dome, in a plastic bag, you need to take the bag off to let them breathe a little bit and then put it back on. So I didn't know that, so the plant got covered with mold, <laughs> 
But luckily enough, like I pretty much scraped it off and it was fine. Um, I took the chopsticks out because they were disgusting, covered in mold. And then um, I decided, you know what, we're done with the bag. We're done with the bag idea. So we're just gonna rock out in our normal, you know, 30, 30 to 34% humidity, depending on how warm it is outside. Um, but slowly but surely, I have to say, these two, I mean, this was obviously a much larger plant when you saw, and she was like really knocking at death's door. Only two stems have made it. I had to prune back the other ones. The leaves just weren't opening and they were pretty much goner. So I decided to chop them off to kind of send energy into the plant. Um, but these leaves have remained open and healthy-ish looking and there actually is new growth um, on both of the stems. So what I'm thinking is I'm gonna let the plant grow and trail, um, then I'll cut them back. I will root it and then pl plant this pot up and try and fill it out a little bit. But it's actually kind of cute the way it is. Um, right now it sits on my bookshelf and kind of tumbles out of the bookshelf and it looks really cute. So it goes to say, I mean, I really, this plant was really on the brink of death as you saw. So if I can do it, you can do it. And also something that was interesting and a big takeaway is holy moly, plants are so resilient. So if you checked out my fern terrarium video, I'm like pretty obsessed with growing under glass right now because I'm finding that it's the only humidity hack that works for me in my new home. So I've been slowly but surely collecting little glass jars like this. And so what I'm thinking is I might like do this. Come on, little guy. I'm gonna have to play with him a little bit. But in my terrarium, sorry, in my grow shelf, what I might do is kind of, um, have him under glass or maybe I think maybe you need a bigger glass but maybe I might try putting um putting her under glass so she just has more immediate humidity around her just to kind of facilitate some of that growth I've seen some really big cloches like Beauty and the Beast style that I think I'm gonna try and get and save one of those for this little angel so anyway, I hope this is helpful. And until next time, my sweet plant friends, keep resuscitating your plants, keep experimenting, keep trying new things, and of course, keep blooming and keep growing. <laughs>